Alrighty, welcome back. We are on air. The on air sign's in the shop, but we are on air. And what I'm out doing is I'm out playing around with this 48 Ford. Um, today I'm probably going to, I'm, I am going to do a little more rush repair. We have another fender that we're going to do. I'm not going to do the bottom half. I'm going to do the side half that we never did yesterday. I didn't show you. But basically I've been running around this morning trying to figure out what's going on with these rims. A lot of people do not want to change the tires on them. Uh, they have a split rim. Um, I thought there was only one, but they're all split. I guess this piece here in the center of the back wheel comes apart. These are bi-supply tires. We blew one off pulling it home. And uh, basically, we don't want to, I don't want to run it with those tires on it. We want to put some radials on it. So we've been running around. We've been running around. And uh, we've been trying to find some Dodge Steel 20 inch wheels uh, to try to see if what we can do with the centers if we can modify them i have cut in the centers out you can see these are uh, riveted in i've have cut them out before cut the rivets off pulled the centers out and put them in another wheel i have done that before but we're having a tired time even finding those and, and that's the part where i find you waste so much time is looking and trying to find it's always so nice when you have something in the yard that you can make work and right now at the present moment i do not have anything that i can make work for the wheels so i'm just going to leave that be i'm just going to have to do a little more rice rust repair when it comes to the front end i'm going to wait for aiden when he comes back and he'll help me put the front end of the jaguar back on because it takes two people uh, me and jolene could probably do it but i can't take it off and on expect her to drop the camera and, and you know just look at things so what i'm going to do is a little more rust repair on the fender but my brain is on this right here uh, we have a five on uh five and a half and i'm not sure what bolt pattern that is but it's a lot bigger than than most trucks or most cars that we have so i'm going to try to make a wheel fit for that so i can put some radial tires on it and when i put some radial tires on it we'll be able to drop it down a little bit we're 36 we're 36 inches tall so we're 30 through three feet we can drop the truck down quite a ways when we put a radial tire on it that's basically what i'm going for so what i'm thinking is i'm going to try to find some 18 inch dodge wheels and uh, we're going to try to put some 18 inch dodge wheels on it and check that out uh, this fender is the other fender for obviously the other side uh, we did the passenger fender yesterday i fixed the bottom i made an inside construction i fixed the front uh, let's let's take this fender in and show you jolene looks amazing today she does and seeing where i can't find i can't find the wheels i uh, just keep moving forward just keep moving forward and and fix the rust in this fender uh, it has to be fixed before i throw it back together i want to throw it all back together and bolt the fenders back on it i've got the running boards out by the sandblaster i didn't figure anybody would want to watch sandblasting today so we're just going to do a little more rust repair um, rust repair is basically one of the harder things that a person has to do on their on their restoration is rust repair uh, making things is fun yes it is but rust repair is one of the things you have to do. Um, we have this piece. This goes underneath the front fender, like on this one. So yesterday I, I put the put the piece on. I showed you. I made a piece from the backside to reinforce it. Jolene's going to show you there. I made a piece for here. It was only rusted on the face of it. I cut that out. Put a new piece in there. Uh, I put a piece in here. I put a piece in there, and what I did is I just cut them out and butt welded some pieces in. Um, basically, someone had taken a sandblaster to these and sandblasted the inside and kind of got them clean somewhat, and I left them outside to get rusty. So that's the fender for the passenger side. We got that one looking good. We're very happy with that. Um, we got this piece repaired. There's just a little bit of rust. The only rust in the whole truck is on the fenders. So I'm really happy about that. I really like this part, how it had the gold leaf on it. And coming around had a big I don't know what, I don't know what you call those things but I think I'd like to do that again on the truck to make it look really nice uh, that would be fun uh, basically I've got out all the tools I had out yesterday um, I might even have grabbed a few more but you know it was simple tools if you know what I'm saying like a screwdriver or a pair of pliers which anybody doing this work should have so what I'm going to do is I'm going to repair the front part of the fender so you can see how I did the, you know how I did the back I showed you how to do the back yesterday 
on this stuff, it's more or less, what can I say? It's called decisions. Um, how you want to go about it, that sort of stuff, just a little bit more light. How you want to go about it, you know, it's called decisions. I have a little bit of damage going on here. I'm not going to play with that right now. I'm just going to do, do the rust repair. But I have uh, set it up on the table here. Wasn't quite prepared because we didn't know what we were doing. And, uh, but we do now. And we're going to go for it. Um, making the decisions on how to repair your fender is sometimes the hardest part. Um, how, I, how do I go about fixing this? And generally, I like to try to do it. I hate to say it, but I say it every time. I like to do it the easiest way possible. And that's the way I'm going to continue on doing it. And that way there, I do not, you know, what can I say? I, I try to make it, I try to look for the easiest way possible at all times. And uh, I'm feeling that anybody that's repairing cars should do the exact same thing. What I have here is I have three places that is rotted out on this fender. I have, I have the side that's rotted out. I have the inner construction that's got rod in it. And I have the bottom here with all these holes that is rotted out. I have three places that is rotted out on this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it in three different pieces. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make, I'm going to make the bottom piece, make the side piece, and then fix the inside piece. Um, you can come here and try to drill all the spot welds out and pull this inside piece out and try to repair that and then try to fix this piece after and then try to put the inner piece back. Not doing that, not doing that. I, I feel like um, that's, that's taking too much of my time. So I'm gonna leave everything the way it is together. Um, there's nothing that's gonna stop. When, once you put that piece in there, there's nothing stopping uh, the dirt and stuff getting in behind that. So once, you know, I'm just gonna repair it and be happy with it. So I'm gonna actually take this here, this shape right here, and I'm gonna clean it up the best I can. And I'm gonna make a piece that fits that. I will probably cut. I see that I have a hole in the inside construction piece here. I will probably cut that out where I can see it now. So when, when it comes time, when I put the face piece on, I can go to the back side and just repair the back side, if you know what I'm trying to say. If I cut this little, this little piece out here, what I want now, then when I put this front piece on, then I can go on the back piece and just lay a piece in there. Then I won't have all this jagged rust in there and I won't be taking a grinder or a zip cut trying to go from this side and cut my outside patch. It's basically what I'm going to say. Also, yesterday I fixed, I did, I always do the outside of the fender first. Oh, I, I always say do the outside first. And the, and the reason being is the outside is what matters. It's the exact same thing as a door skin um, or a quarter panel or anything like that. I generally want to put the outside on first and then go to the inside. And I'll tell you why. I can put the outside of the door skin on and I can shut the door and I know the door skin fits. If I repair the inside, if I haven't got it perfect where it should be, and basically sometimes you really don't know until you put the outside on if it's right or not, basically you don't know if it fits when you fix the inside. So you could, be, you could be fixing the inside and not even know if it fits. That's not, where I'm go that's not where I like to go. When I do the quarter panel or a wheel well or something like that, I fix the outside first because I want that to be, look right. And then I can make the inside fit to the outside. Much faster, makes more sense to fix the inside than try to fix the outside. You are spending way, 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 way more time because you do not know if the outside fits. So in other words, if you fix the inside, it looks great, beautiful, easy to do. But when you go to do the outside, does it fit and will it fit? Or do you have to go back in and cut and repair the inside to put your outside on? So basically, I like to do the outside first because I know it works. Then fit it to the inside, fit the inside to the outside because we know the outside works. And the outside is what matters. I would not want to fit a door skin on just because the inside didn't fit, make the door skin not fit. I let the outside dictate the inside. So I'm going to fit the outside and then the inside. Anyways, uh, we'll carry on from that conversation and I'm going to fix this. So I got this piece of rust going on here and I got this rust here and this rust here. I'm going to zip cut. 
Hmm. Let's figure it out now. I'm going to make this. I'm going to make this piece here first. I'm going to zip cut it so it's nice, so it looks good. Is what I'm going to do. I'm going to zip cut so it looks good. Then I'm going to place a piece in there. That's what I'm going to do. So I got holes. I got it's all jagged and crooked and stuff. I just want to straighten it out so I can put a nice piece in there. Hard to get at. Just gonna peel that off. I have done anything difficult there. I've just kind of straightened my lines out a little bit. Got a pair of pliers. I'm going to try to do this as, you know, as, as reasonably quick as possible. I'm going to turn the air on. I need a little tool to dig that out there a little bit. And I don't have to, but I want to. I don't have to, but I want to. So basically, um, what I'm doing is I'm grabbing another tool. That means I have to go turn on the air compressor. I have to go find it up here. So it just takes a little more time. That's what I keep saying. More tools takes more time. Uh, yesterday, I didn't have very many tools. Didn't take very much time. Uh, we had about an hour in putting and repairing a bottom of a fender. That's include welding. Get that clipped up on there. It's going to... Now all I did is clean that out a little bit. I have a hole right here. I'm going to take out the rust in that now. The reason I'm going to take the rust in that now, when I flip it over, I can fix the inside after I flip it over. I can fix it now probably because it doesn't dictate anything. Going back to good metal. Okay, so I can stick a piece in there, flop that off. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to stick a piece in there real quick. Got my marker. This is not going to dictate this piece here, so I'm just going to stick a piece in it real quick. Have to fix it all. Could fix some of it, I suppose, but have to fix it all. A pair of scissors. Going to get in a little bit of rush now. I've been talking too much. That's so Did I say Jolene looks amazing today? She looks amazing today. She always looks amazing. She's my beautiful lady. We were running around. I was explaining to her this morning how much it, it gets to me when you start have to go around looking for stuff because it really does 
take away your time <laughs> when you go around looking for things and grr, that's not that's not who I am is the person has patience going looking for things when you need something and when you suggest to go get this or go get that you must realize that that takes time to go get something you must realize and if you don't I just told you it takes time to go get stuff time then a baby huh how long were we on the road this morning an hour or two just takes time simple as that alrighty we're gonna fix the inside piece here very quickly because it can be fixed I just feel like it might be hard to weld on the side piece it's gonna be okay but to lay the fender up that way I think it's gonna be a bit harder I'll put a pair of Things on that. I'm gonna flapper wheel this round so it fits in there nice. Try to get it better. Easy. Fits really nice. Fits nice. Let's turn the welder on. Let's go for it. Let's get it done. Let's get it done. Let's get a ground on here. Just untangle for a minute. That takes time. Sometimes it's one of the most timely things in the shop is to get. Ugh. Oh my. Should I just cut it in half or should I? What should I do? Out of there, plug them back in. Cool. Anything at all to slow me down. Anything at all. Welder. Got our hole fitting good. Our little Easter egg. Not worried about warping anything. Gonna weld it on. Turn the gas on. We're on the inside construction piece. It's quite heavy. If I had a hole in it. Flapper wheel that off for a second, or zip cut it off. inside hole fixed or that one fixed now we've got a hole on the side what I basically want to do I see a little bit of rust up in there a little bit of rust there I'm just going to cut it out and then I'll fix it after I get the outside done
tape pair of pliers. Flip it up on this side. I'm going to come over this side. I'm just going to tie this. Well, I'm, all, all I'm doing is, is I'm going to straighten it out a little bit so I can throw a piece in it that the rust is all the way back. But I want to cut it out now, then later. So that's the piece I have. That's going to what the, the, the piece I'm going to put in is going to look like. And I'll put that in after I do the piece on the outside. True. All right. So I've got this piece up here. I have to replace this piece here. And that's just a matter of making a pattern. Making a pattern. Alrighty, I basically always go with the straight edge first, or try to. What I'm doing is just pushing on the edge of the fender, getting the shape of the fender. Let's take a look, because I can. So I've got a shape going on there, a pair of scissors. shape piece going in there now let's draw it a little bit better I want to I'm taking a look at it I'm cheating like I'm supposed to make it easier on myself A little bit shorter. Good. Let's take a look at it here. Let's see where I cut it. I want to lay it in there. I want to sort of butt weld that in there. Not sort of, I do. go off there and all that is educated guest stuff I just want to set down in there I don't want to lay it up on top I want to set it down in there educate guessing it Getting good now. Starting to. Now, this outside is where I'm going now. I got this fitting good out here. So I'm just going to mark this along here.
So now that's the hole I have cut out. And I've got that setting down in there like I want it. Before I before I put that piece in there, we'll do it. We'll get this piece made. Let's get this piece made. Let's do it. Oh, we need that marker. Scraps. Scraps is where it's at sometimes. Scraps is where it's at. Going to the straight edge if I can get one. Nope. No straight edge is available. I cut on the wrong side of the line, I say it every time, we know that it's not going to fit. So if I cut the black line off, we should be good. little cut out there I'll do with a flapper wheel or whatever wheel I got there zip cut even maybe hmm. I'll do with this while we have it here it's gonna go a little bit farther that's all Out a little bit. Basically, want to get it in shape to put it in there. All right, looks good. I want to cut a little bit more off this on the end. This is where I use a lot of coat hanger and stuff like this if I get too much of a gap going on. Like I thought I might there. Alrighty. Now it's time I can shear this off. Shear that off and that off. Just because I don't want it there, it's going to hinder me. But I just want to leave it there. I want to leave it there for reference. I could have guessed. But I'm going to just knock a little bit more of this off and around this hole here. It's not right where I want it. Not the grinder to use. And I should, should play with it a little bit. Should mark it. Just because I don't want to screw it up. So we got it fitting pretty good. Just going to get rid of the black line. Myself gathered up here. Got 
I'm gonna use my air, get a little piece hanging out there I don't like. I'm just gonna knock it back a little bit. Do it. I'm gonna plug this in with the air just because everything okay to me here? Let's get more out. Put that on that. It's fitting good, so. Now, on this piece here, we are under, we're on the bottom side of the fender. We have a piece on the other side of it. I don't think it's going anywhere. I've got a, quite a gap going on here. That's the sort of stuff that you have to be careful, you know, that's basically you want to try to get it fitting as best as possible. Where it's a gap like that, this is where this has come in handy for me. Nothing there to warp, really. I'm gonna hold that down there a little bit on this. By the, well, clamp it. Clamping it too hard. A little bit of a gap going on there. Hmm, what just happened? Got a little ledge going on there. I want to put a little weld in that, take the ledge away. Reason being, just be grind easier, that's all. Take this off. Gonna weld it up along here. See, I got a little big gap in there. I can just do it with the coat hanger. I'm gonna weld this just with the welder because we got enough, we got it just right. Very quickly. No really warp it there. The heat's on the on the upper part. The only thing where the heat's going is on the edge. You're not really hurting that at all. Not gonna see that. We'll finish this off around the, the hole here.
I've got a gap right there you can see. Start pouring the heat to it. I'm on C and at six, so there's quite a bit of heat going there. I like the heat because I'm in it out quick. Doesn't matter to me if there's too much weld there because I can always grind it away. When I'm burning through and having a problem, that's when you that's the issue. Just take her up here a little bit further. Put a little bit of weld right there in the middle where it's not that plentiful. So I have something to grind. Should I grind it now or later, sweetheart? What do you think? Huh? Later, she wants me to grind it later, boys. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go for the next piece. Put that back over there. I guess it doesn't matter. So, I've got to, I'm gonna eye it up on this side. What I mean by eye it up is take a look at it. And uh, if it doesn't look right, well then I won't put that piece in until it looks right. Um, push the table back. I think I want to do this on the floor, I think. I'm not sure. I'm going to do it on the floor. I just want to make sure that's straight, basically. And it looks straight to me. A little bit. Alrighty. There it being a handbag. Nope. I made a piece yesterday. Up, 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 up. If I threw it on the floor, what I did with it. That was for the other fender, but I'm going to use it for this fender. Why not? See if it works. Not long enough, but it works that way. So we got a good lip here. I'm not going to cut that into that lip because no sense me cutting that lip off. That lip, that, that, that's a good lip. So we're going to go like that. Another thing I did is I rounded, I'm going to cut this off after I get it, but I rounded the corners off of the pad of the piece. Sometimes when you bring that to a point there and you bring that to a point there, it'll cause it to warp or do something funny. And uh, I just round them off because I think it would look better. So I'm going to put that on there like that. I'm going to make it a little bit longer. I'm just going to go cut a piece and I'll cut this off as I go. Let's make another, grab another piece of metal. Nope. Not going to use that piece. That piece is 22 gauge. Not interested. I cut a piece there on the floor. It was a 22 gauge. Not interested. Not interested. I want 18. That's what I want. I want 18. That piece had to be a little bit longer. Going with my straight edge first. Because that's what I always do. Find the straight edge. Saves on a cut. Basically, that's about it. Saves on a cut. Guessing. Now, if I cut the line off, the piece should work. Well, it doesn't matter. I haven't cut it out yet, so it doesn't matter.
Just round, round at the corner because I told you of the situation where two points come together. Generally, your, your metal will warp. Um, take, and when you cut your door handles off and you go to close your door handles in because you don't want no door handles in, I suggest that you round the corners on the piece or it'll warp, it'll warp on you. How do I know? <laughs> You'll have to ask yourself. Alrighty. Get this bad boy in shape. Use a hammer. Got enough place to see what's going on through here. Want to get my piece of metal in shape. Just got a little shape to it going on. I'm going to cut this corner out here because I can. Easier now. Okay. We'll get it tacked on in place and then we'll zip cut around it, but weld it in. Just trying to fix a few things. I actually should knock the edges off the metal, just make it a little bit better. Slow down just a second. thing always just gonna butt weld it down in here get this corner fitting all right down here is going to fit and we know that because we got a new piece of metal hurts if you get burnt. All right. So now we'll run, we know where the piece is because it's already laying on there. We'll just run our zip cut right along it and cut that piece out.
piece out. Sometimes it's hard to do it that way because you can't get the piece out, but I think we can. No, I know we can. Just gotta push down on it. Push that piece out. Pair of pliers. Clamps. Yeah, just run along, I guess. It's right here. a little bit above. I'm just going to run the zip cut through that again. Just a little bit more. Just put it on an angle a little bit. That way there you don't get too wide of a gap. Should have knocked the paint off that, but I didn't. But I will. Didn't like how that one right there fit. <clears throat> cool. Take the flapper wheel. It's gonna knock the paint off this bad one. See, I have a little, little uh, here it is. Here it is. I want to get this up in there a little tighter. That's got to be ground off. All right, let's weld this sucker in. Got some air. Alrighty. I'm gonna use, I want a coat hanger. Sure if I wanna do it on the ground or where I wanna do it, to be honest with you. Hard to see the underneath. Doing it that way, I'm gonna bring it back down. Get the air with us right here. I'm gonna use a coat hanger along this edge. You got quite a gap going on there. I say quite a gap, but you know what I'm saying. Get off. Just there's no no dilly dallying. 
when you use a coat hanger. But if I had quite a gap going on there, there'd be a lot of dilly-dallying with the welder. Tap, 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 tap. Trying, trying to fill it. And uh, I'm just gonna put a little more weld in there. See, it's... With the coat hanger, I generally just have enough product. So I usually just go with it. Get it tapped together a little bit better, get some, some more spots on it, so it stays in place. Basically, it's good enough. Let's get a couple more spots on it. damage going on there. Got a, quite a gap going on right here. See the gap going on there? It would take you some time to weld that up, but not this cat. Keep heading around the circle here. The reason it's hard sometimes because it's del delicate stuff, you know, when you're welding thin sheet metal like this. That's why it's hard sometimes. But. You get used to it. It's pretty tight right there, not much of a gap. Just not feeling like holding it on there that long. Keep moving along.
we can x-ray it for anything that's going bad. Put some extra meat in there. It's good. Stop it. Mike fell off here. Is that okay? Clip it on. Clip it on, she says. Clip it on, clip it on. Huh? Ah. Don't want to turn the damn thing off. All right. I think we got it. Does not matter to me putting too much weld on because it gives you something to grind, obviously. I think I've said that before. It's quite delicate right here. So I'm going to use the coat hanger again. I like when the fender moves to see how good I am. Not true. Not true. So fast I can do it. That's all. Got one more piece to replace. The inside piece. On something like this, you'd want to undercoat it in between metal, even after you sandblast it. That's why I rotted out the first time. Because it has two pieces of metal going together. It's obviously an envelope. What 
I mean by an envelope. It catches the dirt. It goes in behind the piece that's in there and the second piece, but the inside extract goes in behind that and stays in there. It can't get out. Let's get this done. Put some bacon on a biscuit. We're burning daylight. Want to do this? Let's get it done. In the spot right there. Close my eyes, stuck it in the hole I want it. One more spot. Cool as a cucumber. Cool as a cucumber. We got one more piece to weld. So we've got the outside licked. We got off. We got the underneath lect. Now we have to finish that one, up, one, in, one inside piece. You can see what the envelope is. You can see how we're, we're welded together here. This is the envelope where the dirt goes in and it can't get out. Like this is the inside piece that you can't get out. So um, basically what we're going to do is we're going to stick a little piece in there and then we'll have it fixed. Both, we'll have both sides fixed. Ooh. I want to bring this over like this. I'll clamp that like that. We'll make a little piece for that. Go to the straight edge first. Nope, a pair of scissors. Where did I put them scissors at? See where I put them scissors, sweetheart? I threw them somewhere, didn't I? Huh? Come on, Susie. Huh? All righty. Piece in there. Oh, that marker's in my pocket. Hooked on my mic. that piece in. I'm gonna go make a piece. Ba -ba -ba. Like I said, straight edge first. Repeat, repeat. That's how you become good at something, is repeat. The more times you do something, the better you get at it. That's the truth, baby, huh?
Come on now. Why is that not turning for me? Yo, wrong spot. Yo, that hurt. If you've never got burnt on the fingernail before, it's one of the most, one of the most um, hottest places you can get burnt that feel good. is on the fingernail. I don't think Aiden's got burn on the fingernail yet. I keep asking him, and I don't think he has. It's nice, I love it. Fingernail. This piece is the inside piece, so it does not connect to the outside piece. It's the, it's the inside construction. Heat that up and then pound it down. How's that? Heat that up. Ooh. I want to pound that down. Sometimes that 18 gauge is quite the unit. in the spot. It's hot there. Beautiful. Beautiful. Let's 
Now I'm going to weld this in here. Gonna be hard to grind off, sort of, but that's what we do. So, you want to come over and take a look? Come over this side, if you want to come over whatever side you want to be on. So we've got the inside piece repaired, got to be ground, but that's how, that's how that piece is, is being, is catching the dirt. This is the inside construction piece that's catching the dirt, making them to rot out there. We have one down inside the back, the part through, that's where that one rotted out. Uh, it's an envelope, I call that, because the dirt can go in, but it can't come out. So we've got that repaired, repair, we repaired this piece, and we re repaired the outside. And uh, very happy with it. Now is the painstaking time of grinding and making it look nice. Um, I will not fill this part at all. I'll just grind that off. Uh, probably, probably seam seal. Probably, probably seam seal this part. Seam sealer is an automotive sealant. And I'll probably grind and, and just seam seal this part in here. Grind it off the best I can. On the outside, it'll have auto body filler, obviously. So we got the inner construction fixed, the under construction fixed, and the outside construction fixed. And that's today's rust repair for me. Uh, I have another one to do up here to finish the fender, and I'll probably do that because I can't get the wheels. But basically, um, the rust repair will be done within you know a day you know to do all the rust repair on the on the truck and uh, that makes me happy i want to thank archie for selling it to us i think he done us right i think the truck is truck works good drives good jolene can drive it i can drive it uh, basically the the biggest issue with the truck is the wheels and uh, if you come back tomorrow i hope you do a call to action like scribe comment um, ring my bell, tell Jolene how good a job she does, uh, whatever you need to do. But thanks for coming back. We appreciate it. And uh, we'll do some more tomorrow. I'm not sure what I'm doing, but you come back and you'll find out.